Uh, you know, it, it, it's a very difficult situation. If you look down the street where the folks are there in front of that building, that building right there, the city of San Bernardino says there are about 175 people in there who have to move. They have to find a new place to live. A superior court judge ordered the landlord to close that building, leaving many of those tenants very worried. I can't tell where this water is coming from. If there's a leak or something. The elevator here, it doesn't work, does it? No, the elevator does not work. As we checked out this building that Jessica Pasillas lives in, the 36-year-old single mom talked of roaches everywhere. Yeah. And, and trash. Yes, a Trash lot. Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. She says there have been power problems. The floors and walls are falling apart. Fire alarms, in some cases, aren't workable. You know, you look around you. And what word comes to mind? Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting to Adrian Everett and Angelina Tramble, who was homeless before moving here. I don't want to be like that no more. And Jessica Pasillas, who has three kids and lived in her car before making this her home. It, it was awful. Now they all face the awful prospect of being homeless again. They and others have been paying six to seven hundred dollars a month for a tiny room with no kitchen in this building that was once a for-profit college dormitory, but it was never permitted by the city for apartment use. The tenants of this building were who were you know are, are at risk to begin with because of the shortage and affordability of housing. City spokesman Jeff Krause says the people in this building have to go, and the building has to be red tagged. The owner who we spoke yep, with, yeah. sir, we need to talk to you, basically blames the city for his problems for not giving him the proper permits. The city went to court to get a temporary restraining order against the, the, the property owner because the property owner since June has had multiple chances to repair and upgrade the property and has done nothing. So now there's an effort underway to help the people who live in this building. But for many, like Jessica Pasillas, the future is unclear. How hard is this for you? It's very hard. Like, it's, you know, it's, I don't want to see myself go back on the streets. Understandable. Uh, the city of San Bernardino says that it will continue to work with tenants, with service, uh, service agencies, to try to figure out what their next step is. But, you know, I got to tell you, it's not a very pretty picture in there. And it, it sounds, from listening to some of what they have to say, uh, a kind of a gloomy next few weeks. Back to you. And so how those people have been living there for a couple of years now like that? Not necessarily. Some people have been living there a couple of months. Some people have been living there seven months. We met somebody who's been there. Uh, actually, the woman you met, uh, Jessica Pasillas, seven months. So a lot of people come and they go. And, and but, but the bottom line is it's housing they can afford. Right. It, Six, but it, 700 bucks. They can afford that. It, and Hal, it's not their fault. They didn't realize that they're renting from a place that is converted illegally without the proper permits. And so is there any recourse for them? You said that they're, you know, being helped by the city, but what, what can happen? Well, you know, even the city spokesman I spoke with said that these victims are being kind of victimized again. And so this is in the courts. The judge is ordering the closure next week. The judge also ordered the landlord to try to help these people through the next transition. But as you heard the spokesman say, nothing has really been done. They can file lawsuits, but there are things the city is trying to do in the legal system uh, to try to help them out.